This is my third time opening up my uh, keyboard and what I did uh, so far, I've replaced the uh, soundboard up here because it cracked. Somebody dropped something on the keys. They also broke the keys. So I've replaced the soundboard already. This next thing I'm replacing, the one of the black keys is broken. So I'm taking that off. And um, basically I'm gonna show you how it all goes back together and explain how it came apart. It took me about 10 minutes, maybe five, five, 10 minutes to take it apart now that I'm really good right, at it. So I pulled this apart. I'm taking out the black keys, putting the new black keys on. Go on here. That's... So basically the two sets of white keys snap together. There's two rails, two sets. They snap together right here. And then the black ones fit in side of here and snap onto those. So I have three layers and I've got four screws that hold them in place. This is a broken black black key that I had, um, and basically the, these keys too, they've um, become obsolete real quick, but this is the um, the old model number was, a, looks like the code is a 121, 122, 123, 124 across the bottom. They have a different set of numbers, these are manufactured out of Japan to replace them, 24, 241, 2345 across the front. All right, so um, I don't know if I missed that segment on it, but basically what you have to do is when you take these out, you have to slide and lift it up and slide it toward you because of the, um, they've got a slide on these little ridges here and these, these claws actually hold on to the keys themselves. So they've got to lift up and pull toward you to come off. So I've done the reverse of that to put it back on. And I just, I'm testing it right now to make sure that the keys do what they're supposed to do um, by kicking out their little pins in the back. And they are, I can feel the weight of the keys, so I know everything's good. I also had this one removed just, just in case I needed to have it taken off as well. And I'm going to slide that back into place now as well. Alright, so now all I have to do is take this keyboard and flip it upside down. And I'm going to reroute the cable, the ribbing cable, and it goes underneath here through here, connect it around, and into this little block here. To properly install the ribbon, it comes underneath this little um, support, and up and through the center between the two circuit boards in the middle here, and then up and around. And the shiny side is up, and you can see the ribbon. Um, blue band here at the, at the on the end. And when you put this in, you gotta use fingers on both sides to hold, and kind of push in and it just pushes in. There's no clip or anything. It just slides into place firmly. All right, so now I'm gonna be using these little screws to install back in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four on these, um, on this support here. And that's all I needed to undo to pull this out, that and that ribbon. Um, over here, I've made piles to organize. When you put, when I put this back together, I'll show you one, two, three, four strips going across that we have to take screws out. Up here, there's some extra screws, and uh, these go, God, I forgot where, but I'll, re I'll remember in a minute, so I've organized that pile there. The reason why I've done this is they're all different lengths. As you can see, these are teeny tiny, and the other ones are different sizes. You don't want to put the long ones in the short holes and vice versa. And then I've organized my strips here that I'll show you in a minute. All right, so um, there are three screws in these plates here, so there are six all together. And then these strips go on here, one, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One over here, and it really helps for this to have a magnetized screwdriver because they fall all over the place, and it's really frustrating to get them into the hole correctly. And notice this is another short screw. Um, <clears throat> there are different sizes um, on the chassis. When we get to it, in a little bit, you'll notice there's these super short ones, or they're just slightly shorter than these. And there's a lot of the longer ones. These are the longer. Not the longest, but the longer ones. And there's three sets of strips that go across like this uh, that are longer. And then these are the longest ones right here. Um, and I'll remember in a minute where they go. I think there's something to do with one of the next steps. Oh yeah, they go, they hold the keyboard in place. So in a minute, I'll be showing you um, somewhere along here. We'll be putting those in. Notice it looks like you need to put screws in here. Don't do it yet because they are going to go through the case and then through into these mount holes. So when you're doing the last set of screws, which I mentioned earlier, 
they're going to come down through the case and down into that metal. So in the next step, I'll be inserting these screws into these holes that go along through here. They're very hard to find, so let me show you how I did it. Used a flashlight, and um, it's hard. There's so many of these holes look alike. So what you're looking for as you go through here are the holes that have uh, some sign of having been threaded before. So as I go down and I'll look in here, I can see that, see if I've got <clears throat> this hole here, you can look deep down in there and you can see that at the very bottom into the white plastic layer down below that it's been threaded and you can see a bit of the thread hanging out there. Other than that, the holes look fairly identical. So there's another hole and there's another hole. You can see the differences though but you really need a flashlight. You can't work in a dark place and kind of find your way through it. There's another threaded hole. See the difference there? Smaller hole, bigger okay, hole. Okay, just to quickly summarize what you have here. When you've got it to this point, when you're disassembling, you've got to unscrew. You've got screws all along here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight screws. There you've got one, two, three, four, take the strip off, one, two, three, four, take the strip off, one, two, three, four, take the strip off. And then you've got, um, where that came from. Um, and then, let's see, you've got your ribbon cable over here, and you've got those three across here and three across here. Once you've got that all out, it lifts out. Just be really careful because you've got a lot of stuff here that if you drop it or lean it on the wrong thing on the keys the keys will break the boards and that's what was wrong with this thing is if somebody had dropped something on the keys the keys had cracked the sound boards there are three sound boards next step is to lift up that part of the case and lay it in right across here and just be really careful your speakers you know you don't want to tear them or rip them so as you're doing it be conscious of that and some of the cabling here just be careful some of it's taped it doesn't really matter i've got some loose stuff here but basically um, just be very carefully where it is with the case laid in place and off it's really snug and nice when it fits correctly um these are the short screws they're going to go uh, along here in this strip and this is where i was telling you about the um, the metal uh, strip that looks like you need screws in it this is where they go in through the plastic and then through the metal strips on the inside um, the longer screws go here on this strip and on this strip along here. I did not need to remove this black bar. And then long screws again on this strip across here. Long screws, long screws, long screws. Or row short screws. Um, and then those screws. All right, so how I started it was I, I just put, I centered these screws. I started in the middle sort of, and then just kind of put them every other space and that way I just made sure that everything is torqued out and spread out correctly and all the bolt holes line up before I do all the screws because I didn't want to have to go back and um, if they were misaligned go back and unscrew and rescrew them all back in so that's a good technique for that <clears throat> and then I'm going to go around the outside edge do these they go in there all those little deep holes and that again you want to have a magnetic screwdriver for there are going to be four screws that go in here and four screws that go in here and then we put these covers on over here all right so they're all in place one thing i'll say is if you get the order messed up on these screws and you don't know which the long ones and short ones where they go don't try to guess because it's not logical at all you'll notice some of them are going you just screw them in a little bit and they're already all the way in some of them like these were really took a long time they're a lot more further out than had to be screwed in so and it's probably because some are going into metal and some are going into plastic. I'm not sure. But anyway, <clears throat> consult the manual, which is what I did. I got mine all out of order the first time I did it. And it'll explain which screws go where. All right. Um, and so basically, I'm almost done. Uh, one more little tip is um, putting them back together. I used a, what is this, a Phillips number two. It's a little bit too big for the job. But um, what I liked about it was it didn't allow me to over torque it would slip if it went in too hard and these are steel heads so that it didn't mess up the heads on the screws or the screwdriver so i thought that was a good tool to use to put it back together i do not recommend using something to take it um powered on 
um, because you'll end up stripping plastic and you can't you can really quickly ruin plastic that way um, when I took these off I just used a, um, a tool kit from Harbor Freight like that um, actually it wasn't that one it was it might have been that one. <clears throat> oh wait now this one did have the bar in it so I used that kit and um, just chose the largest Phillips head and uh, boy it saves a ton of work getting those out and then I followed it with this um, magnet tool and just left it out the screws as I went you could have you could use also the uh, magnetized screwdriver mine happens to be magnetized I don't know how it got magnetized but it it's been really handy to have so the last step is these screws and these are kind of shorter screws and they're going to go around the outside in this little tunnel um, deep tunnels all the way around here that's not the last step i'm sorry but it's one of the last steps. all right this is it all back together and that is a lot of screws oh my gosh um i'll just say that putting it back together i didn't time it but i would say it's close to an hour or more to do all those screws so it's ready to go back together um yeah i guess uh, i'll go through in a minute and i guess the radio is complete if i don't tell you i just removed four screws one two three four underneath the piano here and screwed onto the the base and then that was it i didn't bother with any other screws to get that top off to get the, yeah, i guess no uh, video is really good until you demonstrated that you put it back together and it works so let's give it a try power on here we go all right i don't know what all this stuff is for but anyway let's just reset it okay all right here we go is our test See, these are the keys I fixed. Good. All right, sounds good. Let's let's give it the real test now. The real test. Real test. Hmm. Real test. I don't know if that's focused, but let's see. Let's see what kind of stuff we can get out of this